Hi, this is John with The Evolving World. Today we're doing a video on adding LED lighting to our charge port on a Chevrolet Bolt EV. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a, a nice little loop right here, lighting. So what's going to happen is when you open the charge port, it's going to come on. And when you close it, it's going to turn off. And um, when we're charging, it's going to be synced to our dash light here. Um, you know how we have our, our light that blinks at different rates depending on the state of charge? It's going to be synchronized with that. And how we're going to be able to do that is we're going to be tapping into a, directly into the original wiring harness. Um, GM actually allocated this whole idea. So there's actually um, a place to plug into. Um, in fact, there's actually a GM part number. You can buy a factory OEM uh, ring that's going to be very similar to what we're doing. Um, it's something that comes in a big plastic housing and it snaps in. But um, it's like $300. And it seems a little hefty for just a little LED light. So, um, plus you have to install it. And that's the, probably going to be another $100, you know, because it's going to take a little bit of effort to do that. I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, but we were talking about 400 bucks there, so it's like that seems a little hefty to me. And I'm so, I think what we're going to be doing here is a much better solution because it's going to look factory. It's going to do everything that the other one does, but we're going to do it at a fraction of the cost. So I'm going to show you how. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you want to do is you want to gather all your materials beforehand. So shopping around, um, I got this on Amazon. Um, you might be able to get it on eBay. You might be able to get it at other places as well. Um, this is basically just uh, LED strip lighting. Um, if you can find the right size, this is the size. I've already cut off a piece. Um, this is what we're going to actually need here. It's 15 inches. That's all we're going to need. Now, this is like 16.4 feet. So we've got enough to do another 12 cars here, basically. Um, but this is the only way I could find it. So... If you can find yourself a 15 inch piece, this would be great. This is what it looks like when it's cut right here. You can kind of see his LED lights in there that are shining on here. We get a nice even glow of light right here, which is what we like. I've already got this marked right here, red for positive and then black. This side is gonna be negative. That's what we're gonna be soldering into. I've already tested that piece, so it's working good. And then the next thing you need is you need some good double-sided tape right here, some high quality automotive grade double-sided tape, three-eighths of an inch wide is what you want to, to um, be just a slightly under. This is about a half an inch right here wide. And that's going to be used for sticking this on the car. And then the next thing you need is you need some, some thermostat or doorbell wire. This is commonly available at any, any, uh, your, any of your typical home centers, um, hardware stores, all that stuff. You can buy it online. You can, this, once again, this is like another, probably, uh, I think I got a 50-foot roll of it. So I cut off three feet. You're going to need three feet here. That's all we're going to need. So 15 inches, three feet. And then the hardest piece to come by are these little pins. Um, these guys are tough to find. I really had to search high and low for these things. It's hard to get these. Um, so I actually ended up buying a whole kit just for this job. I only need two of them. We're only going to need two, one positive, one negative. Um, but that's the way I had to, to get them. So I wasn't able to find them by themselves. So that's the, the final piece in the photo. These things are officially, they're, they're called 1.5 millimeter connectors, but they're actually, I took a measurement, it's closer to one millimeter. And that's what I measured off the car when I looked at it before, before I bought this stuff. I had to know what I was going to match, so that's how I determined it. I needed a one millimeter connector, so but it turns out it's actually officially called a 1.5 millimeter connector. So once you gather all the material, um, you're probably going to be buying it in, in a kit. You're, going to, you're probably going to have to get the big, the large piece. You're going to have to get the, the big roll of this. You're going to have to get the big roll of this, although this has already been cut. And then you're going to have to get a kit or something to get all this. But when you actually divide it all out, the actual per unit, per car price, is going to be under $5. And so that seems like quite a bargain compared to $300.
Now we are going to have to fabricate this, so we are going to have to use our solder iron and actually uh, solder this up and everything, but even with that factored in, you know, we're still going to be like 50 bucks, I would think, at the, at the most. You know, that would be absolutely at the most. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, put this thing together. So here's what it's looking like after it's fully assembled, ready for installation. We went ahead and soldered our wire in here. As you can see there. And we also, these are kind of like pressure uh, connections, but, but I'll go ahead and just solder them as well, just to make sure. I never trust the type that you just press on them. That never seems to be 100% certain. The only way to really be certain is to solder it. So that's what I've done here. And then I've applied the tape here, the double-sided tape. Make sure when you do this that, that this thing is already in a, in a kind of a U-shape. Like that, otherwise you'll get lifting. The tape will start to curl up and come off, won't stick properly. So you want to make sure that you got it already in that shape, such as so. So that's pretty much ready to go. The next thing you want to do is you just want to clean this area right here. Make sure you have a nice clean mating surface for where this is going to go. We're going to be pushing it all the way to the back as far as it will go. But one thing that's nicer about our version of it compared to the factory one is that the factory one's a big bulky plastic piece that goes in as one whole unit and it actually narrows the area here so it sticks out more than my my version of it and I've actually heard from other people that that have installed those that it makes the the tolerances the tolerances are so tight that when you're putting in the CCS fast charger the big bulky handles that those tend to be that especially down here you actually get almost like friction like like it's so the tolerances are so tight that you have no room for error whatsoever I mean it's like it's just basically a millimeter or something of clearance and that's it so like you know you can really so you're going to be hitting that thing when you put in your your fast charger potentially it's pretty hard not to so with this one our strip is actually back beyond back a bit back from where the face of that would be so there's not going to be any interference whatsoever it's going to be back beyond so that's another advantage to doing this as opposed to the factory part so all we really have to do now is puncture just a little hole up here next step is to remove the 12 volt battery you're going to need a 10 millimeter wrench to loosen up your terminals for the top of the battery you can remove those first start with the negative and then you're going to need a 13 millimeter deep uh, deep socket, like so, with an extension. And that's to get down in there. And once you take off this one on the top here, there's another 13 millimeter way down in here. Now with the bracket off and the terminal is fully disconnected, now the battery simply comes right out. Be careful, this is a really heavy battery. Be careful not to put your back out in the process here. You also have to look out for the clearances here. It's kind of tight. Next step is to remove the CPU. It's right, it's attached right to the battery tray right here. And then there's another little connection back here that you want to disconnect. Right here. Removing it off the battery tray. Four bolts that are holding the tray in place. Right here. So you take your 13 millimeter socket, go ahead and remove those. And then go ahead and lift the tray out. Now that we have the battery and the battery tray out of the way, it opens everything up right here. So now we have real easy access to the connector that we're going to be tapping into. And this is a 36 pin connector. There's only one right here, so you can't make a mistake. All right, so there we go. And then all you have to do is push on this. Disconnect it. Make sure it's all the way 180 degrees. And it should just snap right out. There we go. And there's our connector. This is where we'll be tapping into. You can see there's a bunch of pins already there. Those are the same size pins as what we're going to be inserting. So the hard wiring is already there for this, this whole system from the factory. It's already on this side. It's this side right here is what goes out to our accessories. 
Next step is to go ahead and prepare for what we're going to be adding our new wiring. So we're going to be tapping into pin number 28, which is right here. It's the open one right there. And then we're going to be tapping into pin number 30, which is this one right here. So this is going to be our positive right here. And then this is going to be our negative right here. So let's go ahead and open up the case of this thing. So this piece comes right out, pretty simple. And it opens up access to the back here. So as you can see here, so we want pin number 28 right there, that white one that's by itself. And we want the far left one over here, which is pin number 30. We want to go ahead and take those out. See the one on the right there, I've accidentally pushed it in. I actually did the same thing with this one. So when you do accidentally push it in by accident, don't despair. It's not a problem. All you need to do is take a drill bit and then stick it in there and basically just kind of drill it and then kind of grab it and you can kind of wedge it out. And also um, using a tiny little screwdriver. But uh, it's something to be a little bit cautious about in this procedure. Try not to push it in if you can help it, but if you do, it's not the end of the world. We're using a three foot section of fish rod. This is uh, one type, there's fish tape and there's also fish rod. So this is a more rigid type fiberglass. It's a little bit more flexible, but it stays straight. And what we've done is we cut our slit out right here, stick your finger through, and then you just keep poking at your rod until you line it up. And then once you get it through the hole, you just pull it right through. So that's what we got right now. So all we have to do now is attach our wire to this here rod, and then we'll be able to pull this rod right out and our wire will come right through. So our wire is now through. I thought we might be able to route it underneath this structural member right here, but it's really, really tight down there and it's it's hard to get, it's hard to track where the wire is at. So I tried that, but it's not working very well. So I think we're just gonna stick with the easy route and we'll leave it up top here. And then we'll just, we'll tuck it underneath this, this box right here so you won't see it too much. And there's, there's batteries and stuff here, so you really don't, you're not going to see it too much. So on this side, now that we've got that through, we have it, um, be very careful here. These are thin wires, but we've got it right where our hole is at, so that's about where we want to be. Now we can start taking the, the double-sided tape off and just start tucking it in here, starting on this side, work our way around. We should have ourselves a nice uh, shape that matches our existing car here. So here it is, installed. We have a little gap up here. We're not gonna really see that. That's why we have it at the top there. Most times you're gonna be looking down. You're gonna be looking at it from the sides all around. This is gonna illuminate really nicely. We'll be able to find that plug real easily. It's a little tricky to to get it in there perfect. I was using a screwdriver in here to kind of get it in there. It's, it's a little bit tricky. But uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Now we're ready to go ahead and plug our wires in right here. So simply guide these in. Okay, so here it is, installed. See, the, the new pins are in place now. And there's a bit of resistance getting those in, so I think they're going to hold in place pretty well by themselves. Um, it, it helps to, to use a little watch screwdriver or some sort of tiny little poking device to help poke this wire in here. Because there's so much resistance in there, so you want to be able to get it in there, poke it in there, and it pretty much should be tight now. Here's what it's looking like. In a more finished state here, I wrapped everything with electrical tape to kind of bind it together with the other wires just to help keep it from moving. And then I also wrapped it around the base here just to keep it more tight and together. So now all we have to do is put our little finished piece back on here. And here it is fully installed. When I put that outer cap on, it didn't quite close on the on the wire side here. It closed on the upper side, but not on the on the outer side here. So I just wrapped it with some duct tape to kind of keep it in place, keep it sealed. And it went right in, no problem whatsoever. No resistance or anything. And so we have some extra wire here. You can uh, 
route our tray is going to be going back in right here so we're not going to see any of this and then our battery is going to be up the only place you see any kind of wires right here and that's kind of not really avoidable but uh, other than that it should look pretty much factory no one's going to know how it's going in now that our battery is fully installed again we are now ready to see the results of our work Ooh, how about that that is looking pretty good not bad so there's different features with this addition uh, one thing that happens after 60 seconds this would power down on its own and that's a setting from the factory there's no way to change it unfortunately because I kind of think it's kind of too short but that's what basically happens here let me just show you so there it is 60 seconds it powers down on its own. I guess it's just to save the 12 volt battery from being discharged. Although there's very little current going on there. It'd be pretty difficult to drain the battery. But to reactivate it, that's all you have to do is open the door. And that resets it for 60 seconds. And then of course when you close the, the, the port door, it turns off. And then when you open it, it turns back on. And then as far as charging, there's two different options here, depending on your preference. So one option is you, you plug it in on one setting, it flashes once, and then it turns off. And then as you can see here, the car is charging. It's showing as it always does on the dash. So that's option one. Now, some people prefer to have this flash in unison with the with the dash light so I'm going to show you how to activate that so you go into energy settings you go to charge status feedback right here and then there's a there's a setting called horn chirps now they may have changed the wording on some of the newer cars, this is a 2017, I'm pretty sure that they changed it possibly, but there'll be something exactly like that or very similar to it. The wording would be, might be different. And then you get this, how about that? That is pretty cool. So that is completely synchronized with our dash. <laughs> That is pretty cool. So it's nice that you have the option of, of, you know, going one way or the other with it, just depending on what you what your needs are. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe if you did. Many more videos to come.